This is the reason why 97% of Namibia is empty. The population of 2.541 million as of 2020 is located in southern Africa and borders the Atlantic Ocean on its west, Angola and Zambia to its north, Botswana to its east, and South Africa to its south and east. Namibia is about three times the size of the United Kingdom and the Namib Desert that rolls along its coast is deemed to be the oldest desert in the world with sand dunes higher than anywhere else on the planet. In fact, Namibia encompasses both the Kalahari and the Namib deserts, and as such, has many dry rivers and scare water resources, making it a country with a very low population density, just 1.4 people to every square mile, the second least densely populated nation in the world. The History of Namibia Officially, the Republic of Namibia is a country in southern Africa. Its western border is the Atlantic Ocean. It shares land borders with Zambia and Angola to the north, Botswana to the east, and South Africa to the south and east. Although it does not border Zimbabwe, less than 200 meters, 660 feet, of the Botswana right bank of the Zambezi River separates the two countries. Namibia gained independence from South Africa on 21 March 1990, following the Namibian War of Independence. Its capital and largest city is Windhoek. Namibia is a member state of the United Nations, UN, the Southern African Development Community, SADC, the African Union, AU, and the Commonwealth of Nations. The driest country in Sub-Saharan Africa, Namibia has been inhabited since prehistoric times by the San, Damara, and Nama people. Around the 14th century, immigrating Bantu peoples arrived as part of the Bantu expansion. Since then, the Bantu groups, the largest being the Ovambo, have dominated the population of the country. Since the late 19th century, they have constituted a majority. Today, Namibia is one of the least densely populated countries in the world. Namibia became a German protectorate in 1884 and remained a German colony until the end of the First World War. Between 1904 and 1908, the German Empire carried out what was later to be identified as the first genocide of the 20th century below against the Herero, the Nama, and the San in German Southwest Africa, with between 24,000 to 100,000 Hereros and 10,000 Namaqua killed. Germany has officially acknowledged this event and offered reparations. After Germany's surrender to the Allies in 1918, Namibia became a League of Nations mandate territory and then was annexed by South Africa after World War II. While Namibia may have escaped the clutches of the Germans, it fared a little better with its new masters. Those familiar with South African history will know that at that time it was ruled by whites and its apartheid policy was extended to Namibia in 1948. It was one of several flashpoints for Cold War proxy conflicts in southern Africa during the latter years of the Plan Insurgency. The insurgents sought out weapons and sent recruits to the Soviet Union for military training. As the Plan War effort gained momentum, the Soviet Union and other sympathetic states, such as Cuba, continued to increase their support, deploying advisors to train the insurgents directly as well as supplying more weapons and ammunition. SWAPO's leadership, dependent on Soviet, Angolan, and Cuban military aid, positioned the movement firmly within the socialist bloc by 1975. This practical alliance reinforced the external perception of SWAPO as a Soviet proxy, which dominated Cold War rhetoric in South Africa and the United States. For its part, the Soviet Union supported SWAPO, partly because it viewed South Africa as a regional Western ally. Since independence, Namibia has completed the transition from white minority apartheid rule to parliamentary democracy. Multiparty democracy was introduced and has been maintained, with local, regional, and national elections held regularly. Several registered political parties are active and represented in the National Assembly, although the SWAPO has won every election since independence. The transition from the 15-year rule of President Nujoma to his successor Hifik Puni Pohamba in 2005 went smoothly. Why is 97% of Namibia empty? The availability of water plays a bigger role. There's the Namib Desert, taking up 100 to 200 kilometers. 
a wide stretch of land along the whole of the Atlantic coast to around one-tenth of the country's total land mass. There is an extreme desert that receives as little as two millimeters of annual rainfall on average. In this desert environment, only mining, harbor activities, and fishing support human life. Tourism brings valuable income. The central south of Namibia, with an average rainfall comparable to some parts of the Sahara, can support farming only on very large tracts of land. The few towns in those regions are small, separated by large distances, and mainly serve the farming community. Most of the east of Namibia is Kalahari semi-desert, while the central parts are just a notch above semi-desert. Water is an issue for the capital of Windhoek and most other towns. This puts limits on urban growth and industrialization. The only relatively well-populated areas are in the far north-northeast, where rainfall is higher. The country has no perennial rivers, except on the northern and southern borders. On the one hand, Namibia is fortunate. In a densely populated world, it offers unpolluted nature, space, quiet landscapes, and vistas. On the other hand, the challenge is to protect its vulnerable resources from short-term exploitation and to maintain an infrastructure that stretches over such long distances. Namibia is the driest country in sub-Saharan Africa and depends largely on groundwater. With an average rainfall of about 350 millimeters, that is 14 inches per annum, the highest rainfall occurs in the Caprivi in the northeast about 600 millimeters, which is 24 inches per annum and decreases in a westerly and southwesterly direction to as little as 50 millimeters, that is 2 inches and less per annum at the coast. The only perennial rivers are found on the national borders with South Africa, Angola, Zambia, and the short border with Botswana in the Caprivi. In the interior of the country, surface water is available only in the summer months when rivers are in flood after exceptional rainfalls. Otherwise, surface water is restricted to a few large storage dams retaining and damming up these seasonal floods and their runoff. Where people do not live near perennial rivers or make use of storage dams, they are dependent on groundwater. Even isolated communities and those economic activities located far from good surface water sources, such as mining, agriculture, and tourism, can be supplied from groundwater over nearly 80% of the country. More than 100,000 boreholes have been drilled in Namibia over the past century. One third of these boreholes have been drilled dry. An aquifer called Ohangwana II, on both sides of the Angola-Namibia border, was discovered in 2012. It has been estimated to be capable of supplying a population of 800,000 people in the north for 400 years, at the current 2018 rate of consumption. Experts estimate that Namibia has 7,720 cubic kilometers 3 to 1,850 cubic miles of underground water climate factors. Namibia extends from 17 degrees south to 25 degrees south latitude, climatically the range of the subtropical high-pressure belt. Its overall climate description is arid, descending from the subhumid with mean rainfall above 500 millimeters, 20 inches through semi-arid between 300 and 500 millimeters, 12 and 20 inches embracing most of the waterless Kalahari and arid from 150 to 300 millimeters, 6 to 12 inches. These three regions are inland from the western escarpment to the hyper-arid coastal plain less than 100 millimeters, 4 inches. Temperature maxima are limited by the overall elevation of the entire region. Only in the far south, warm bad for instance, are maxima above 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degrees Fahrenheit recorded. Typically, the subtropical high pressure belt with frequent clear skies provides more than 300 days of sunshine per year. It is situated at the southern edge of the tropics. The Tropic of Capricorn cuts the country about in half. The winter, June, August is generally dry. Both rainy seasons occur in summer. The small rainy season between September and November and the big one between February and April humidity is low and average rainfall varies from almost zero in the coastal desert to more than 600 millimeters, 24 inches in the Caprivi Strip. Rainfall is highly variable and droughts are common. 
In the summer of 2006 to 2007, the rainfall was recorded far below the annual average. In May 2019, Namibia declared a state of emergency in response to the drought and extended it by additional six months in October 2019. Weather and climate in the coastal area are dominated by the cold, north-flowing Bengala current of the Atlantic Ocean, which accounts for very low precipitation, 50 mm, 2 inches per year or less, frequent dense fog, and overall lower temperatures than in the rest of the country. In winter, occasionally a condition known as bergwind, German for mountain wind, occurs a hot dry wind blowing from the inland to the coast. As the area behind the coast is a desert, these winds can develop into sandstorms, leaving sand deposits in the Atlantic Ocean that are visible on satellite images. Due to the low and erratic rainfall and scarce ground and surface water, less than 5% of the country is arable, including through irrigation. Namibia was the first country in the world to incorporate environmental protection into its constitution. Nearly 6% of its land is nationally protected, including large portions of coastal areas within the Namib Desert. High Rate of Poverty Relatively high poverty, lagging human capital, and poor access to basic services are interrelated problems. Namibia's poverty rapidly declined from 1993 to 94 to 2015 to 16, but it remains high for the country's level of development. Despite recent progress, Namibia ranked 117th among 157 countries on the Human Capital Index. Namibia's economic recovery continued in the first half of 2022, but it has been uneven, with several sectors lagging. Real GDP growth increased to 5.3% year-on-year, supported by stronger activity in the mining, manufacturing, and financial service sectors, but has since slowed. Momentum in mining was sustained into the second quarter, with diamond production increasing by 50% in the first half of 2022. The effects of the pandemic on economic activity have waned, with all remaining COVID-19-related restrictions removed in July 2022. GDP growth for 2022 is projected at 2.8%. Unemployment Today, Namibia struggles with huge unemployment, around 50% of the population, according to the CIA World Factbook. HIV AIDS affects 15% of the population, according to data compiled by the World Health Organization, and more than half the population lives below the international poverty line of $1.25 a day, according to data from the UN. With one of the highest rates of income inequality in the world, the result, in large part, of a rural, cashless subsistence economy, land reform is one of Namibia's most hotly contested issues. In 2021, the unemployment rate in Namibia remained nearly unchanged at around 21.68%. 2021 marked the third consecutive increase in the unemployment rate. However, about 96.5% of businesses were adversely affected by COVID-19 and will continue to be affected in the coming months, according to the results of a survey conducted by the Namibia Statistics Agency on the effect of COVID-19 on selected businesses in the country. Nevertheless, Namibia was a huge market for international tourists, receiving an average of 1.5 million tourist visitors annually, according to the 2018 Tourist Statistical Report. We hope you found this video interesting and educative. Leave a thumbs up and click on the subscription button as well. Like, comment, and share with your friends. See you in our next video.